Oh, hi there! <laughs> I didn't see you there! Well, you actually caught me at a pretty good time. I'm currently making a whole game and I've got like a concept list of plans. Do you want to have a look at my notes so far? Okay, so, sex appeal, that's the most important one. Let's check that off. Let's see, using generic model? Yeah, check. Atmosphere? Hmm, I can try. Uh, let's see. Make my own assets? Pfft, I don't have time for that, I'll just borrow some. And, uh, English grammar? Hmm, I try, but no guarantee. Hmm, the side that I thought. <gasps> oh, I know! I'll just get some inspiration! <laughs> Luckily, I just downloaded this game on Steam called Evil. Surely that will help. Right? Game production is not the easiest thing to do in the world, I think that's pretty obvious. When you think about all the different things that go into the game, such as the character design, the level design, the mechanics, and pretty much everything, you start to really appreciate the amount of time developers took out of their time to make it to entertain the audience. But then there are cases where you can tell that the game was either rushed or just not a lot of time of effort was put into it. Anyhow, that's beside the point. But hey, I'm getting ahead of myself. Who knows, Baby Evil has a lot of creative passion that will inspire many horror games to come. From what I can tell, Evil was published in 2017, and it's hard to find anything else about this game. Probably because it goes with such a generic horror title that it is buried by other horror games with similar names. And perhaps that's a good thing. God damn it, Google, stop trying to save me! Wait, what's that noise? Well, that was disappointing. Whoa, 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 calm down there, buddy. Don't worry, it's only you from the future! Was it even panicking though. Well, I'm here to tell you about what happened to Evil and why you can't find it. Oh, really? What happened to it? Yeah, well, right, get ready for this. It turns out, Evil was so bad, it got removed from Steam. Oh. Uh, uh, any, anything else? Yeah, uh, nothing else really. Oh. Okay, I guess. Anyhow, I gotta get going. Wait, but before you go, uh, uh, anything else you need to tell me? Um, yeah, you'll die if you say your outro. What? Ooh, would you look at that? I have to go. Bye! <laughs> nah, I'm sure it's nothing. No, I, I'm sure Evil must have been so good that I got removed, like P.T. Yes, I am still upset about PT, you know, being removed from the solo and I regret it on the solo again on my PS1 and I quite understand about it. Anyhow, enough about that. Let's just play the game and experience a masterpiece. Well, I would love to start the game if it stopped giving me a seizure for half a second. Language? <laughs> English, obviously. Let's have a look at the controls. WASD to move, E to interact, Q to cancel, Shift to run, and whatever that is. Wait, 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 hang on! I selected English to be my language! Why is that control not changed? I don't speak vodka! There are cases when the character stops walking. To fix this, double press the escape button. Okay, that's cool and all, but shouldn't this be already be fixed during the making of the game instead of when it's published? Loading takes one to five minutes time. Oh, thank God, it's not higher than five, otherwise I would have died of starvation! I'm not even kidding, the game took like a good two minutes before loading a- Ah! Boobs! Booby! Honky Tongas! <laughs> fucking Jesus. <laughs> Truly, my comedy is supreme. Obviously, the game begins, and we are... Um... A female. Yeah, I got no clue who we are. We wake up saying that this is the second day we suffer from insomnia. Sad face. We also say that I feel today is waiting for me fun night. Okay, first off, I don't know what you do on your Friday night. Also, where is the music? <gasps> Well, 
Well, I'm glad that the sound effects are not gone and we have music, but come on, seriously? That's scary? That just looks like someone who's not left their room for ages and to go and get something from the kitchen. Hello. After witnessing that spooky event, we start to question of what we saw and decide to wash our face with cold water. And hey, remember what I said like a, a couple of minutes back? Well, I'm glad that the sound effects are not gone and we have music. Well, take that statement out of the window because it is dead as quiet. Like, no, I'm not joking. There is nothing playing. No walking sound effects, no voice acting, no music or anything. Just dead ass silence and my two coconuts and yes before you ask i checked the options and there is nothing about volume well at least we have a few sound effects i guess but come on man a little more couldn't hurt you there's too dark hmm maybe yes so we need to look for a sink to wash our face with, and so I thought the most logical choice is the bathroom, only to discover that not only that we have the most impractical shower ever, and that for some god only knows reasons we have a washing machine in the bathroom, and that there is no sink. What kind of house is this? Oh boy, that must be the no-no room. Closed. Me was never allowed to enter there. Me think good choice. Okay, maybe this other shower might be it. I do not want to take a shower. Okay, fine, sure, I guess. Maybe there's something else that we need to... Oh, Jesus! Are you trying to kill me? And because of that knocking, we forget to wash our face. Like, no, I'm not kidding. Our character apparently just forgets. Uh, oh, there's them stolen assets. Also, apparently, it's so dark in this room that the mirror is just projecting pure darkness. Even though that's not how mirrors work, but... Okay! So, we go and answer the door, and apparently the parents who were knocking blow up. No, I'm not joking. That literally happens. Now, instead of panicking like a normal person, our beloved heroine just calmly states that we should check the cameras. Like, mate, your parents may have just got blown up by Killer Queen. Shouldn't you be at least panicking or calling the police? <laughs> don't, don't, don't funny. Anyhow, that's our new objective. Gain access to the cameras. But I swear to God, it takes a lot longer than it should have. Basically, we need to find a key, right? But the key is like so dark, there is no highlight to indicate that this is the key that I need. Plus, it's not fun when this happens. Yeah, it's fine. They need them anyway. Again, I am not joking. I had to seriously lower the goddamn volume in the editing because this jump scare was so unnecessarily loud that it hurt my ears. Yeah, sure, it's a jump scare, but it's a bad one at that. You need to learn the difference between a good one and a bad one. Take plenty of examples from Dead Space, Prey, Thief, and whatever, and learn from that. Well, Thomas, don't you think you're being unfair to an indie game that was probably made by one person? Yeah, but Afraid of Monsters was also made by one person, Andreas Bromberg, who's from Team Psychar. You know, the same people who made Cry of Fear, and he knew how to do a good jump scare, and that's all from a goddamn Half-Life 1 mod. This is a satanic symbol. What makes this book here? Mmm, an author? Anyways, after searching this house for ages, we finally arrive at the computer where the cameras are operated at. We can also see a safe, but we'll get to that later. We use the cameras to capture some paranormal activity. And nothing happens. I kid you not, I spent like a good five bloody minutes on this camera to maybe capture a ghost or something because I thought it was essential to the game's progression. Then again, what am I expecting? After doing a good sweep on the house, our protagonist tells us that I go to the kitchen and drink a pill. Yeah, I don't blame you. And just like what was said in the loading screen, I got stuck. So by pressing escape, I could freely walk again. Again, why wasn't this fixed before release? It should have been the developer's job to find any bugs in this game before release. Then again, I'm starting to think nobody even playtested this game. 
We get to the kitchen and grab our pills. Now let's use the sink here to... Wait, hang on. Water is in my room. But there's a sink right there, though. Okay, fine, I guess we're going to the... Hey, how's it going? Of course, you die if you get close to the thing, with a lovely addition of the horrible screaming noise and probably the most bland game over screen ever. Mm, I would complain about this, but what's the point? Of course, we need to find a way around it, and no, looking at the floor or walking behind won't work. After searching around, you have to be in this room for the dialogue to kick off. The character says that she hid in this closet when she played with his sister. I'm sorry, who is the he? When was there ever a third bloody character? I also know we are in the right room because there is an obvious demonic symbol on the mouse pad. Someone likes Doom. And I would rather be playing that than this tripe. Also, the thing stands by the door, so of course you have to hide in the closet. We do so, and a cutscene plays, and I'll just let it play. Majestic. We wake up and notice that there is writing on the mouse pad saying safe. So obviously we need a code for the safe. And I swear to god this is the worst section in the game. The safe code is like so goddamn hard to find that to this day I still can't find it. Hmm, maybe it's behind this statue. Oh hey, how's it going? Helping me find the... What? Seriously? Yes, so if it's not obvious enough, we need to look for a code that gives us no hint to what it is, whilst also dealing with the fact that this thing can just kill you whenever it likes. After dying and surging around this house three times, I gave up and cheated. Yes, I know I just admitted that I cheated, but if this game is not going to have any effort put into it, then why should I? Anyhow, after finding a goddamn YouTube comment to find the code, we get the key to the basement. And yes, of course, there's a coffin and a goddamn weird statue. Ah, oh, cram, not again! Wait, hang on. I wonder what is there. Is that you talking or me? And of course, this coffin lid just levitates into the ceiling to reveal a stolen skeleton asset with a book. We not native children of our parents. They took us out of the orphanage, but not in order to grow. A for their rituals. <sighs> Do I really need to explain why this is a terrible sentence? They told you that Jay was died. Whoa, 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 there. Hang on a fucking second. Who is Jay? When was she ever mentioned? Why is she suddenly brought up? Was died in an accident, but you were at his grave. No, because her not exist. Okay. They brought him. Wait, wait, hang on. Jay is a he now? But just a couple of seconds ago, you just said Jay was a she. Also, you just said that Jay didn't exist, so why are you telling me now that he does exist now? Oh, God damn it, this game can't even be consistent with storytelling. In Sacrifice Satanic Ritual, later was my turn. Okay, so the general twist of the story is that there are apparently two or three kids, and they were adopted by a family, and they are slowly getting killed off one by one for a satanic ritual. Such a simple story, and yet evil doesn't get that right. We are then presented with a choice. Either burn the book and kill the parents, because they will soon kill you as their next sacrifice for their ritual, or you can just run away. But to be honest, I don't want to have my ears ruined again, so I'll decide to burn the book and avenge... Sarah, apparently? After taking the machete, we finally learn our protagonist's name. Cassina? I think? I, I don't know, I've probably butchered the name. Sarah thanks us, and we go off to bed to wait till the parents come home. And you can guess what happens next. So now you're probably thinking, oh my god, we just committed first degree murder, what's gonna happen to Cassina? Well, let's see what happens. Then again, what was I expecting? So, what did we learn today, class? Well, we learned that video games were a mistake. I mean, I can somewhat forgive you if it's like your first video game being made, but there's just so much wrong with it that I just can't. 
You, Thomas, you didn't have to be so first to the creator. After all, this game could have been free! Yeah, well, it's not. I paid real money for this. I could have spent that money on Monster Munch! Anyhow, I think I've said enough about this game. This is, like, one of the worst horror games I've ever played. I'd rather play Summer Nightmare than that. So, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you like, comment, favorite, and subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, crap! I've said my outro! My future self said I was going to die! Hey, have you seen my goggles? <laughs> Wait, was that my future self? What have I done? Nah, who cares about continuity? Hey, yeah.